So this is a case of an adult man uh, presenting with long-standing history of hypertension, diabetes, and uh, microvascular ischemic disease. Now here, this is the axial unenhanced uh, T1-weighted MRI sequence, and you can see that there is a, a band-like region of cortical hyperintensity in the left, in the left precentral gyrus. Okay. In the left precentral gyrus, there is a region, band-like region of cortical hyperintensity. So, considering this uh, uh, key imaging finding of band-like increased T1 cortical signal intensity, the top uh, diagnosis should be the cortical laminar necrosis. Okay, the cortical laminar necrosis is the top diagnosis here, uh, and this could be due to a variety of causes, uh, including hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, cardiac arrest. Most commonly, it happens because of that pulmonary disease or trauma or near drowning or status epilepticus or drug overdose, toxins and so forth. So they can uh, cause hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and uh, one of the manifestations of uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is cortical laminar necrosis. Next case, uh, this is uh, an 8 year old boy presenting with headaches, vomiting and ataxia. So this is the image. This is a sagittal T1 contrast enhanced MRI and uh, these are other sequences. Now as you can see that on the sagittal uh, contrast enhanced uh, T1 weighted MRI there is a large posterior fossa mass uh, with cystic and enhancing solid components. Uh, there is obstruction of the fourth ventricle uh, with hydrocephalus and inferior displacement of the cerebellar tonsils is also noted. Here on these images, we can see that uh, this uh, axial T2 and uh, T1 post contrast MRI, uh, the mass is slightly eccentric to the left and uh, there is solid enhancement here as well as enhancement along the walls of the uh, cystic components. So the solid component is also enhancing and uh, the walls of the cystic components are also enhancing. Uh, the fourth ventricle is uh, effaced and there is surrounding edema in the cerebellar hemispheres as well. So there is surrounding edema as well in the cerebellar hemispheres. So considering this uh, typical picture uh, of uh, the mass, posterior for some mass in a child, the top differential will be juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma and in the differentials we can include medulloblastoma, juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma, ependymoma and uh, brainstem glioma or ATRT which is atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor uh, which is a cystic bubbly appearing lesion in a uh, child. So the top diagnosis will be juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma in this case. This next case is uh, of a 52 year old man presenting with headache and new onset gait disturbances for one week. This is the history. Now you can see uh, that uh, this is the axial flare uh, MRI and there's a, the axial flare MRI shows a wedge shaped region of uh, heterogeneously increased signal intensity within the inferomedial uh, left cerebellar hemisphere. Also on the corresponding axial T1 uh, weighted image, uh, this, the, it shows that uh, on the T1 weighted image, we can see that this is uh, hypo intense, this area is hypo intense and on the post contrast sequence we can see that there is peripheral gyral enhancement. There is peripheral gyral enhancement in this lesion. There is peripheral gyral enhancement in this lesion which is located in the inferior medial left cerebellar hemisphere. So considering this uh, typical imaging picture uh, in uh, adult patient that is this is the posterior for some mass in an adult patient the top uh, differential should be uh, the subacute posterior inferior cerebellar artery territory infarct that is pica infarct okay uh, you have to include infarct pica infarct in this case uh, in the top differential list along with any metastatic process or hemangioblastoma or any vascular uh, malformation or any hypertensive hemorrhage can also be included in the differentials so this is a case of subacute uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery territory infarct that is pica pica infarct Next case is of a teenage girl who is presenting with ataxia and headaches. These are the MRI images of a teenage girl. Uh, now we can see that on the flare sequence there is a diffuse abnormal increased signal intensity within the pons on the right side uh, which is extending into the middle uh, cerebellar peduncle and a right cerebellar hemisphere. On the post contrast sequence we can see that there is ring enhancement uh, centrally 
uh, with surrounding hypo intensity okay so there is ring enhancement centrally with surrounding hypo intensity so considering uh, the key finding uh, imaging finding of the enhancing pontine mass in a child the top differential uh, should be uh, of course brainstem glioma however uh, rhombencephalitis is the diagnosis in this case rhombencephalitis with abscess rhombencephalitis with abscess is the diagnosis uh, in the other differentials, uh, you can add brainstem glioma or uh, you can add uh, demyelinating disease like Adam or rhombencephalitis, of course, is the top differential here. So, this is a child, 15-year-old boy, presenting with headaches and vomiting. Uh, these are the sagittal T1 uh, pre- and post-contrast uh, sequences, uh, which are showing a lobulated enhancing uh, penile region mass, uh, which is causing the mass effect on the tactile plate and it is causing the obstruction of the cerebral aqueduct uh, with associated hydrocephalus. Uh, there is also a small a nodular enhancing focus uh, within the superior third ventricle. Okay, There is a nodular enhancing focus within the superior third ventricle. So considering this uh, uh, imaging finding of a penile region mass, uh, the top differential will be uh, of course penile germinoma with CSF dissemination. Uh, however, we can also add a penile cyst in the differential and germ cell tumor or any penile cell tumor or tectal plate glioma or meningioma. So the diagnosis here is of a penile germinoma. Now this is uh, a case of a 11 year old boy presenting with the headache and visual changes. Now you can see uh, that uh, this is the sagittal T1 pre and uh, pre contrast sequence, there is post contrast, and uh, this is the CT scan. Now you can see that uh, there is uh, a mixed cystic and solid uh, ISO2 hypo intense supracellar mass uh, with regions of enhancement. You know, with regions of enhancement, there is a mixed cystic and solid ISO2 hypo intense supracellar mass. And there is mass effect, it is causing mass effect on the hypothalamus and optic chiasm. And uh, the sagittal reformatted CT scan uh, shows regions of calcifications within this mass. So this is uh, supracellular mass in a child. This is uh, a typical case of craniopharyngioma. Okay, this is a typical case of craniopharyngioma, these imaging findings. And uh, you can also add uh, germ cell tumor rathke cleft cyst in the differential along with optic nerve or hypothalamic glioma and hypothalamic hematoma can also be included. So this is a 57 year old woman presenting with headache and blurred vision. Uh, these are the images provided. So you can see that on the axial T2 weighted MRI there is a large predominantly hypo intense uh, supracellar mass uh, which is uh, eccentric uh, to the left with regions of increased signal intensity internally. On the axial uh, T1 weighted pre-contrast image, uh, you, you can see that there is predominantly, this lesion is predominantly ISO2 hypo intense uh, signal. It is giving predominantly ISO2 hypo intense signal peripherally with a circumscribed region of increased uh, T1 signal uh, medially and uh, centrally. Also, on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there is intense enhancement uh, centrally or medially with a more linear and nodular peripheral enhancement. Uh, more linear and nodular peripheral enhancement is also noted. Also, uh, in, these, in these images, we can see that uh, the both T1 images uh, are showing a pulsation artifact in association with the mass. There is pulsation artifact in association with the mass. So considering this imaging finding, uh, the diagnosis here is of uh, aneurysm with mural thrombus. However, uh, considering that this is in a supracellar location, so pituitary macroadenoma or craniopharyngioma, aneurysm, meningioma can also be included in the differentials list. Now, this is a case of a 16-year-old girl uh, presenting with chronic headaches. Uh, 
sagittal detuvated MRI shows a circumscribed hyperintense cystic lesion uh, within the posterior aspect of the pituitary gland with a tiny hypointense nodule uh, along its uh, posterior inferior margin. Along with it is a tiny hypo hypointense nodule along its posterior inferior margin and uh, the sagittal uh, post contrast image shows that there is lack of enhancement uh, within the cystic portion of this lesion okay so there's no enhancement within the cystic portion of this lesion and there is a circumscribed hyper intense cystic lesion uh, within the posterior aspect of the pituitary gland with a tiny uh, hyper intense nodule along its posterior inferior margin so considering this clinical uh, this typical this imaging finding the uh, diagnosis should be rotkey cleft cyst a presumed uh, diagnosis should be rotkey cleft cyst as the lesion is cystic cystic lesion in the uh, cellar location intracellular cystic lesion however pars intermedia cyst can also be included in the differential and uh, cystic pituitary microadenoma uh, intracellular craniopharyngioma uh, dermoid or epidermoid cyst can also be included <laughs>